A little while ago, I got an email from a resident who's about to start their radiology residency in the coming year, and they asked if I had any advice for them before they started radiology. And I immediately thought, I'm going to ignore this email, <laughs> which was honestly kind of a weird initial response for me. Um, I worked as a tutor for a lot of years, and honestly, my favorite part of that job was kind of the mentoring aspect. I loved being able to share my tips and tricks uh, to help people feel comfortable in their roles and feel like they were you know, being successful. In fact, when I got really busy in residency and I had to cut back on the tutoring, I kind of transitioned more to just writing blog posts for the company that I was working for. And I primarily wrote advice about how to study, how to use Anki, you know, how to succeed in your clinical rotations. That was, you know, giving advice was kind of my jam. But, uh, but here's the thing. I don't particularly enjoy radiology. And this is something that I've slowly come to realize over the past couple of years and only recently fully embraced. But radiology for me is, is very much just a job and that's okay. I am totally fine with that. I actually felt a lot of relief once I was able to admit that to myself and stopped making decisions based off of a set of values that I honestly didn't even have. But I do think this is probably why I didn't initially jump at the chance to offer advice. I think subconsciously, I thought because now that I no longer you know, eat, sleep, and dream solely about radiology, I probably wasn't qualified to give advice anymore. But I don't agree with that sentiment at all, actually. <laughs> Just because I treat radiology like a job doesn't mean that I'm not working hard and that I'm not trying. Um, I'm actually, if anything, I feel like I'm working harder now because it's a lot harder to motivate myself to study. So screw it. Here's my advice to radiology residents as somebody who doesn't enjoy studying radiology, but does it anyways. First question. Uh, this is regarding pre-made Anki decks. Are there any pre-made Anki decks that you would suggest for radiology? It's a good question. There are a couple of different pre-made decks out there. Um, one in particular that I think is really good and, and is kind of a new deck um, is a crowdsource deck called Encore. It is a comprehensive crowdsource deck based on the core radiology textbook. Core radiology is one of the more popular textbooks among radiology residents in the US at least um, because it contains most of the high yield information that you're gonna need to know for all of the subsections that appear on our core licensing exam, the core exam. This is the deck that I wish I had when I started radiology, but that didn't exist yet. Um, it's a Zanke style closed deletion deck and it's got a lot of great images in it directly from the textbook. Um, you know, the, it's written very similar to how Zanke was, where it's just very simple statements. And they include screenshots from, you know, where the information was sourced from in the textbook. So you can double check it yourself to make sure it's accurate. I haven't used all of the pre-made decks, but of all of the ones that I have used, this is my favorite. And I, this is the one that I think is, you know, it's worth your time to look into. The downside of this deck is it is, it's massive. I mean, it's a comprehensive deck. So it's over 24,000 flashcards, I think. Um, I don't think that it's made its way to Reddit yet. Uh, you can get it on AnkiHub. Some of you may know what that is. Um, I'm going to make a video about that in the future. But basically, AnkiHub, it's an add-on, but also an online platform that allows you to subscribe to different decks, and they sync to your own collection. And then you get uh, updates. If whoever maintains that deck makes updates to the flashcards, you don't have to go out and download that deck again. Your cards will be automatically updated so you know you're using the most updated version of whatever deck you subscribe to. Um, it also makes it really easy to collaborate on decks, uh, which is awesome, but I'll talk more about that in a separate video. OnkiHub is a subscription-based platform, so it's $6 a month currently, um, but you could you know, get a subscription download the Anki deck that you want, and then you could cancel your subscription and you'll still have the deck after your subscription is canceled. So that's one way to get it. Otherwise, if you know somebody who has it, they can just give it to you. Um, but without that subscription, you're not gonna have the continuously updated deck. All right, so the second question here, do you have any specific strategies or tips that you would recommend uh, for effectively using Anki during residency? I use Anki as my main source of studying in residency. It's just what I found works well for me over the years. And I, my preferred way to use it is typically I'll study a topic in some other resource, usually watching a YouTube video, doing some targeted reading in a textbook, maybe doing some uh, questions from a question bank. And then based off of what I studied, I'll go to my flashcard browser, I'll search up the topics that I studied, and then I unsuspend those flashcards, and I'll then review those flashcards. And then I keep up with the reviews kind of on a daily basis. 
I like this because it gives me some background. I study the topic first, and then I use the flashcards um, for the space repetition. That makes sure that I remember everything, and then I just find that I don't have to do so much dedicated review uh, when it comes time to take an exam. I'm just kind of ready because I've kept up with my flashcards. It makes it so I don't have to think about it, and it's, honestly, it's just easier for me. So. For example, if you were going to do something similar um, and you planned on using the Encore deck, uh, you could read the section or you could read a chapter in core radiology and then go to your flashcard browser, um, search the topics, or the Encore deck is organized by chapter and by section. So you could unsuspend all of the sections that you've covered or more realistically, just pick and choose the topics that you feel like are really difficult or the topics that struck you as being particularly high yield and then just do those flashcards. You don't have to do all 24,000 flashcards. I think that's unrealistic um, and totally not necessary, um, but it's nice that they have all of the cards so that no matter which topic you feel you want to review, there'll be cards made for that topic and you can just unsuspend them and review those cards. I don't do this, but a lot of people, particularly in my comments section, will tell you that creating your own flashcards is really good for learning material, new material. I totally agree. It doesn't work for me because it takes so freaking long and I'm just way too tired after I make all of those flashcards that I never end up reviewing them, which is why I mostly use Python automations and ChatGPT to make flashcards. If I'm going to make flashcards, that's the only way that I can handle doing it. But if you have the time, Making your own flashcards is an excellent way of learning the material. I mean, it just, it takes a lot of cognitive effort to like synthesize, synthesize, synthesize the material and then put it into a flashcard. So yeah, you're going to learn it if you do that. I got three kids. I don't have any time. And the last thing I'll say about this, I, I keep up with my, all of my Anki reviews. So that's like the bare minimum amount of studying that I will do every single day. Um, I make sure that I keep up with my reviews. I may miss a day here or there, and you know that's fine. It's it's not too bad. But I do make an effort to keep up with my reviews. I typically have between 40 and 90 reviews. Sometimes I'll have like 100 up to 150 at most. Um, but that's if I've put it off for a couple days. Usually I'm kind of between 40 and 90, and that's just like very manageable. It sounds like not a lot of flashcards. That's partly because I do a lot of flashcards that are based on cases and so I am recalling a lot of information for each card um, which is kind of a cognitively taxing way to do it but it works well for me because radiology is very case-based and you kind of have to have multiple findings so you're gonna have to recall multiple things that's just kind of the way it is all right another question I think it's uh, number three here um, what advice do you wish you had received when you started your residency are there any particular things you would have changed in your approach I like this question a lot Starting out, I made the mistake of completely changing how I studied. Because when I showed up, everybody said, you've got to read textbooks. Here's the list of textbooks. You got to read them. That's what everybody does. That's how you're going to be successful. And so that's what I did. But I, before coming to radiology residency, had never really been able to just read a textbook and learn everything that I needed to know from it. I, my mind wanders, I have ADHD, something's wrong with my brain. So I can't just read something and have that be it. But that's what I tried to do. I tried to read for six months. I learned very little and quickly burned out. And after that, I didn't study much at all for the rest of the first year, um, which was not good. What I should have done is I should have just kept doing what I knew worked for me before getting to radiology residency, which is you know using Anki flashcards, studying a topic, using the Anki flashcards for retention, rinse and repeat. I would have been fine if I did that. So my advice would be to stick with the horse that brought you. Use whatever study methods you've used in the past that have been successful for you. Just keep doing that. There are a million ways to learn radiology um, and there's no one size fits all solution. There's a ton of information to learn and you just have to make sure that you're learning something every single day. Whether that means you read a little bit, you answer a couple questions in a QBank, or you do your Anki reviews, just make sure that you're doing something every day. And then one day you'll be in the reading room and the phone will ring and they'll be asking you to check a level one trauma or a code stroke, or somebody will come into the reading room to ask you to review a case and you're gonna make all the findings, you're gonna knock it out of the park and you're gonna sit back and be like, holy crap, I know radiology. It's not something that happens uh, immediately. It'll kind of slowly happen over the course of 
a couple of years probably, but everybody gets there. You just have to make sure you're learning something every day. All right, last question. If you could provide a list of essential books for daily reading and reference, it would be tremendously helpful. I don't read good. I would say you should probably prioritize any of the books that are recommended by your residency. Um, just realize that your attendings and your, your instructors, they're going to quiz you based off of the things that they know. So if you want to know the things that they know, you should probably study the books that they tell you to study. Um, that's the information that they're going to expect you to know. So if you don't study that, maybe you'd look like an idiot. I don't know. Beyond that, if you plan on using the Encore deck, then Core Radiology would probably be a pretty good book to have on hand. Other specific texts um, that I like, um, Fundamentals of Body CT by Webb, uh, Donnelly's Fundamentals of Pediatric Imaging, uh, the small one, the, the thin book, not the 700,000 page one. Most of the requisites books are pretty good. There's a million radiology textbooks, and they all say essentially the same thing. Some have better images than others. So pick up a book, look at it, read it. If it sucks, put it down, pick up a different book until you find something that you like. One series of books that is pretty popular here in the US um, is the Crack the Core series, I think. Yeah, I actually have it here. So Crack the Core, um, it's kind of like a review book um, targeted towards the core exam, the exam that we take. Um, the guy who writes it is hilarious and kind of salty, so it's a lot of kind of a lot of fun to read as well. Um, so that's one that a lot of us in the U.S. are going to read. Kind of in that same in that same series, there's a physics book called War Machine. That's another one that we all read typically. But honestly, most of the time, I find myself just looking up specific topics on YouTube or just reading radiographics articles on specific topics. Um, I feel like that's been more helpful. I do read these books just because, <laughs> I don't know, I guess I still follow the crowd in that way a little bit, but I do feel like they're pretty helpful um, in short bursts. <laughs> if you sit down and try to read like a full chapter in a day, you're gonna die. <laughs> it's just very, very dense, very difficult. I mean, honestly, residency is overwhelming whether it's radiology or a different residency or, or especially in medicine, it's very difficult no matter what you do. And, you know, you don't have to make it harder on yourself by thinking you have to make it your life. It doesn't have to consume everything that you do. One of my favorite Grand Round speakers actually recently uh, was Dr. Fred Mettler. So he's kind of a famous radiologist, nuclear medicine radiologist. Um, he wrote a lot of books. He's authored like 300 articles and, and, and textbooks. Um, he's also like the U.S. Uh, representative to the U.N. Um, I have to look what Wiki Wikipedia says about him. Yeah, he's the U.S. representative to the U.N. for radiation effects and was the health effects team leader during the Chernobyl project. Um, basically, when the shiz hits the fan, he's the guy that's getting out of the helicopter in slow motion. He's the guy Brad Pitt is going to play when they make the movie. Okay, He stood up in front of a room full of academics and his headline message to everybody was that radiology will come and go, but what's most important is your family, which was kind of like, it was awesome. <laughs> and it's funny just to look around the room and see everybody's reaction to that. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I felt like that resonated, you know, pretty well with me. So, I sent that email with all of that advice in it. This resident actually resonated, you know, with my sentiment that radiology was kind of, you know, mostly just a job for me. Um, and they, you know, were grateful for my honesty in that regard, which is why I decided to make this video. Whether it's radiology or another specialty or something completely outside of medicine, um, your job doesn't have to be your everything. And if you're passionate about medicine, that's amazing. Lean into it. I'm so happy for you. But if you're not, and you're like me, and it's kind of mostly just a job, that's okay too. You're definitely not alone. That's something that I've realized a lot more recently. And you're definitely not any less valuable to your colleagues or to your patients. Go ahead, apply yourself, work really hard, learn everything that you need to learn, but don't forget to also live the life that makes you happy. Because like Dr. Mettler said, the job will come and go, 
but what really matters is the people that are going to be waiting for you at the end of the day. At least, that's how I see it. Till next time.